<laughs> no, 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 no. How cute is this little city, though? I mean, just everything about it. I want to start shooting now. Alright, so it's Sunday here, and I'm at the Intercontinental, the stunning Intercontinental Osaka, and I'm about to go breakfast, they have a lovely breakfast here, and then I'm going to walk over to the train station, make my way to Kyoto, and hit up the Leica Kyoto store, which is supposed to be one of their most famous stores around, it's supposed to be quite special, not your average Leica store, even though all Leica stores are quite special. Anyway, I go have breakfast, then I hit the train station, head over to like a Kyoto. They're gonna surprise me with a camera to take out for the entire day. Whatever camera they give me, I'm gonna do my honest review, give you some tips along the way, have some fun along the way, and show you guys Japan. So that's where I go to find out which new cameras are coming out. The Rumor Plaza tells me this year, Q3 is coming out mid end of the year. Okay, that's false information, I'm just kind of teasing. All right, this street's kind of funny. There's all these lanterns here. Lantern, I saw the red. Thought this might be the store, no, not the store. Wait a minute. Here she is. I'm here. From the outside, looks a lot different than any like a store I've ever been to. Here we are. Oh my goodness, can I fit? <laughs> I fit. surprise camera they've lent me here. I said I wanted something small, maybe. I mean, I was thinking something small, they didn't know that. They surprised me here with like a SL2 and with this 24 to 90. So this is a beast, but I'm actually excited too because Kyoto is a very colorful city and it's kind of hard to take photographs here because a lot of signs that say like, don't, no photographs. There's a fine, 10,000 yen fine. Uh, so this way, maybe I don't have to get as close, but maybe I will still get close. And Hopefully I'll get a fine. I take this camera outside the store. We're gonna explore Kyoto together. I'm gonna give you my sort of real-time uh, analysis of this camera. What I like, what I don't like, uh, how it's performing. I imagine it's gonna perform well, but you never know. Uh, it's gonna be quite a different experience than my M and my 35. Just see how this performs. And at the end of the episode, I will tell you exactly my full thoughts on this camera, if it's for me or not, and who I think it might be for, who it's not for, that kind of stuff. And I'll give you some photo tips along the way. We'll have some fun, we'll explore Kyoto. And just also wanna say thank you to Leica Japan for lending me this camera. It's quite different than what I'm used to, so I'm curious to see how I'm gonna like wearing this all day long. <laughs> I will post your photo today. <laughs> Arigato, thank you. I love Japan. So I went around the streets of Kyoto for a little bit and I think you can't come to Kyoto without visiting one of these Buddhist temples. So this here is Kaninji Temple, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's the oldest Zen Buddhist temple in Kyoto and it's quite interesting. So I'm gonna go in there, it's gonna be kind of quiet though. Japan's very peaceful, it's a different sort of pace than Vietnam is as far as uh, how loud it is and all the rules and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go in there and just see if I can get some nice little architectural shots, some nice little moments, uh, test this range out. It's actually nice to have a 24 to 90 here because you know, this is the kind of area and this kind of country. It's hard to get close to people. You'd have to like earn a story to get really close. So I'm gonna try to like sneak around and pick off some shots of people just from afar. 
and sort of stay with the Zen vibe that's going on here and not get super close. Uh, first impressions of the camera so far, it's heavy, I'm not gonna lie, it's super heavy compared to anyone that's out there using the Q system or the M system. Not just the body, but the lens is quite heavy, but it's super sharp, super intuitive, and very robust in your hand. So I could see using it for travel photography if you don't mind long days with something heavy on you. Love the LCD screen, uh, love the viewfinder in there, the resolution, it's really sharp, super intuitive and the handling of it. I love the touch menu system, that's nice. I mean, coming from the M10D, any menu system, it's, it's nice. I still like the simplicity of that, but that's just me. But the Kyoto store was funny too, a little funny moment in there, I just tell you guys. Uh, so when I sat down with the guy, I guess I don't look the part of a Leica photographer or a photographer in general. I thought the hat would give it away, but he kind of looked me up and down and I'm like, I'm Justin. He's like, oh, very <laughs> surprised. And then even after that, ushered me into a little private room, which was funny, and he's like, um, I just need a passport to prove you're a real person. <laughs> Brother, we don't know uh, you are a real person or not. <laughs> so. Very sweet, very gracious, and very nice, and had a lot of questions. Once I showed him my work and my passport, he seemed to be uh, a lot more, not, not that he wasn't welcoming, but just a lot more open. And to film in this, I just missed a shot, which is kind of a bummer. These ladies in the traditional outfits just walked by with an umbrella behind me there, and I missed the shot because I'm talking to you guys. So I'm going to head into this temple, head around this area, and pick off some little shots, and then I'll hit the streets, and I'll head back this afternoon. Bye for now. Finishing up my first day with the Leica SL2S. Did do some testing in the temple at 100,000 ISO. Be curious to see what that looks like. I'll show you guys. Uh, 50,000 ISO, tried it like really super high ISO. Focus today on capturing, you know, just street photography, architectural photography, wander around the streets of Kyoto. Had a great time, found some vegan ramen, met some nice people there. Now I'm in the back little streets here. I'm gonna make my way back to Osaka. But I'm curious to see what the quality looks like. I'm gonna just get back to my hotel room and upload some photos and check them out, especially low light shots. But it's such a fun day photographing people. Like it's a popular place for people to go to temples and dress up in their kimonos and have the photo taken. So, uh, but a fun day, a really fun day. This is great to wander around and tour. And like a Kyoto is super friendly, super nice, and their shop was amazing. So I'm gonna head back to Osaka now. So a couple little tips that just came to me while I'm waiting for the sun to break. I hope it breaks. I see a little glimmer of hope there. So train station, I need light for that to work. When I'm shooting architecture, big buildings, I need light. You know, just in general, even yesterday in Kyoto, light's going to make it shine. I mean, buildings, in my opinion, I mean, they can be beautiful, but without good light hitting them, it's kind of a waste where I feel like with people, when I photograph people and photograph travel stuff, you know, if the light's not great, I can make up for it with other things. I can make up for it with their emotion or a moment. Buildings don't have emotions, don't have moments, so a little bit tricky. So, again, shooting architecture, I'm going to look for beautiful light. I'm going to wait on light. I'm not going to give up. And just another little tip for you guys, too, is just be ready. Whenever I leave my hotel in the morning, when I'm shooting street photography, shooting travel photography, even going out shooting a documentary, uh, leave your home, leave your hotel ready to shoot. Meaning, like, I wake up, I look outside, and I'm like, okay, pretty bright out or overcast or whatever it is, I dial in my exposure settings right then and there. Another thing I do, lens cap, take it off. I don't need a lens cap, I don't even carry them with me, but if you need to carry them with you for protection, I just use a UV filter for protection, fine, but don't leave it on, take your lens cap off, off your lens, be ready to go off all your lenses. Another thing is just have your camera on, again, because you just never know, you're gonna walk out your door and just be ready to shoot, be prepared. Things are gonna come up, and that one extra step of having to take a lens cap off, having to dial on your exposure, it's just one more thing to hold you back, or one more reason for you to miss a shot and not be ready. All right guys, the weather was absolute garbage outside today at Osaka Station, and so I'm back here to wrap up and give you my full 
review here, my final thoughts here on the Leica SL2S and the 24 to 90 lens. But before I do that, I just want to give you guys a quick tour of this room here at Intercontinental Osaka. They've sponsored this episode. This is a three bedroom suite here on the 32nd floor with a giant wraparound balcony with sweeping views of downtown Osaka. I'm gonna do a full review about the hotel and my thoughts on it, but it's just been an amazing experience. So thank you Intercontinental Osaka for the service, for everything. I mean, it's just been a wonderful stay, especially the food I'm putting on weight. But I just wanna give you guys a quick tour of this room. It has this gorgeous wraparound balcony. Very minimalistic Japanese style architecture and interior decor here. It's fully equipped for residents, for long-term residents as well. So it has a kitchen, dishwasher, uh, laundry, has this giant kitchen table here, living room. Give you a quick little tour here. That's the kitchen. We've got the big living room here with those sweeping views I talked about. And that nice little outdoor garden. I wish, again, I wish the weather was great so I could show you the views here at sunset but just the views of the city are just incredible. It's insane how big this balcony is. Uh, bedroom's really nice, bathroom's really nice. Anyway, that's a quick little tour. Next time you're in Intercontinental Osaka, stay here, tell them, tell them I sent you, say hello. Um, lastly here, we're gonna go over here, I'll sit down here and we'll talk about the camera itself and my final thoughts about this little beauty here. So my final thoughts on this camera, who it's for, who it's not for, uh, you know, I'm not a big tech guy, so I'm not gonna give you all the specs. You can check all those out or go to another YouTube channel. But my final thoughts are using this camera with this lens for the day, it is significantly heavy. You will feel it. I spent a long day in Kyoto. We are shooting all day, train ride home, and I felt it at the end of the day, just carrying this combination around. Because with the lens and the camera together, you're looking at about four and a half pounds. So that's a lot. If you're coming from a Q system or an M system, it's gonna feel significant. If you're coming from a uh, system that you take for traveling around, and you take a 7200 and 24 to 70, a bunch of lenses, yeah, it's not gonna feel that heavy for you. Maybe not if you're a backpack person, but as a street photographer, this camera, a couple things. Okay, I would love this camera because of how great it is in low light. It's great for night street photography, but I wouldn't take it out with this lens. I would use a prime. You wouldn't even need like a low light prime of a beast because the sensor is a beast. I mean, you saw those images I shot at 25,000 ISO and even that image at 100,000 ISO, it's still really good, still really usable. Uh, that kind of blew me away. But another thing I felt like using this camera on the tight streets of Kyoto, because it was quite small and like you saw those traffic guys coming in, blocking everyone and cars came through. I always was nervous about this lens. Like it, it's significant, it's big. I was nervous I was gonna get clipped by someone going by on a bike or I was gonna be in the way. And so in tight quarters, it wasn't great to use. I would say this lens with this camera, this combination would be great for anyone that does travel photography, landscape photography, and only goes out and shoots for like maybe a couple hours. If you're like the type of person like me, you shoot really long and full days, it weighs on you. Uh, what I think this combination would work well would be this with the Leica SL2 for commercial photography because you have that 47 megapixel sensor, so it'd be great for commercial photography, something like shooting a hotel like this. Couple that amazing sensor with this lens and you're covered for all sorts of different situations, lifestyle shots, interior shots, exterior shots, kind of everything. So if you're looking for like a one camera, one lens solution, this would be it. The design of the SL2 system is incredible. I love the navigation system. Internally, I love externally where all the buttons are, the look. That's the nice thing here too about the SL2S. It has that blacked out like a look, so it is more for street photography. I would use this body, but I'd use it with a fixed M lens. I'd probably use it with my 35 millimeter M lens just because that would make it a lot smaller. I have used that, the past version. I really like that combination. This lens just too big, just too bulky for me, but that's just me. The video quality on this, I would say it's really good. It's, it's their best video camera they've made so far, so it's a step in the right direction. They're still not at that level of like an FX3 with all those features that Sony has, but it's still a very capable video camera. I wouldn't buy this if you were just like a video dedicated person, but if you're a photographer that's interested into growing into video, yeah, this might be an option for you. Shooting at 180 frames per second on the street, that was fun. I mean, that was fun shooting in full HD at 180 frames per second on the streets of Osaka and being able to see it in real time on the camera. That was nice. Also shoots 4K 60p, which is also nice. But again, a lot of cameras at a lower price point do that as well. So for me, this isn't the type of camera I would love for street photography, but for commercial photography, I would definitely consider its big brother, the SL2 with that 47 megapixel sensor. Cause I don't need a sensor that's great in the light. I need a sensor that's going to look good when the clients want to blow up the images quite big for, 
you know, poster size and billboard size. But this combination with this lens and this body, that heavy weight was just a lot on my shoulder. I still enjoyed the experience. I still love the quality, the sharpness that this lens has, the low light quality of the sensor, and just the overall quality of the pictures that I got out of this, the color, everything about it was fantastic. I enjoyed the experience, everything but weighing on my neck. I'm an old man, so I didn't like that. I'll stick with the M system, but I'll consider, I'll consider the SL system for my commercial photography. We'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the pictures and seeing my process of how I take pictures and just the experience. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. Let me know what you want to see less of, what you want to see more of. Let me know just overall what you think about the series because i got a lot more planned. Again, thank you to Like in Japan. Thank you to Intercontinental Osaka. All right, guys, take it easy for now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day. The thing about Japan is I always feel like I'm doing the wrong thing. Like I'm in trouble, shouldn't be standing here, shouldn't be walking there, not queuing up right. I feel like a kid that's constantly in trouble. I love it here, but I can't, it's, I can't help but feel that way all the time.